One of the weird reasons that Christians connect Jesus to the Passover lamb is that in the story of Jesus' crucifixion, we're told that unlike the two people who were hanging on crosses next to him, Jesus expired very quickly. The Christian Bible says that the Romans did not want Jewish people to be hanging up on a cross over the Sabbath. The Romans were very nice and sweet. And what they would do if someone was crucified on a Friday, when normally it would take several days to die on the cross, so the Romans would hasten their death by taking a big wooden mallet and breaking their legs. Why would that help? Because the person on the cross would prop themselves up by their legs on the cross beam on the bottom and allow themselves to breathe. That was the reason people died from crucifixion. They asphyxiated because they couldn't support themselves. They would collapse under the weight of their body and their body would crush their own diaphragm and they couldn't breathe and they'd be asphyxiated. So the Romans, if someone was crucified on a Friday in order to make sure the person would die before the Sabbath, they would break their legs so they wouldn't be able to support themselves. Their, their upper thorax would crush their diaphragm and they would expire. So the Christian Bible says that when Jesus was crucified on a Friday, the two people next to him were still alive and kicking, so their legs were broken. But they came to Jesus and it says he already was dead. And they didn't have to break his legs. And the Christian Bible says, you see, in the Jewish Bible it says that you can't break any of the bones of the Passover lamb. And you see, Jesus' legs were not broken. And that fulfilled the requirement in the Jewish Bible that none of its bones could be broken. The problem is that this is sort of very selectively choosing which laws of the Jewish Bible to fulfill. The Jewish Bible has many laws of sacrifices. First of all, you for sure couldn't sacrifice a human being. The Bible goes into great length excoriating and, and basically cursing people who sacrificed human beings. Secondly, a sacrifice could not be blemished in any way. One of the reasons why they would take the Passover lamb and tie it up for four days before they sacrificed it was to make sure that it was examined properly and there were no blemishes, no nicks, no cuts, no scratches. Every Jewish sacrifice had to be examined very carefully to make sure there were no blemishes or scratches or cuts. Well, Jesus was beaten up before he was crucified. He had a crown of thorns put on his head. He was circumcised, and in the Christian Bible, they describe circumcision as mutilation. He was stabbed in the side by a Roman spear. He was whipped viciously. And so he clearly was someone that was not without blemish. He had plenty of physical blemishes. He certainly could not serve as a sacrifice. According to the Jewish Bible, all sacrifices had to be roasted, had to be burnt. Jesus was not burnt. And so when you go through the laws of sacrifices, it's sort of absurd to say, well, he must have been a sacrifice. His bones weren't broken. And yet they very conveniently ignore all the other laws of sacrifices. The one ironic thing that I want to share is that there was a significance to the Passover sacrifice. We know from the Jewish Bible in the book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 22, that the Egyptians worshipped the lamb. Egyptians worshipped the lamb. And one of the things that we were doing by taking the lamb and tying it up in our homes for four days was to really rub it into the faces of the Egyptians. We were making a statement. We were taking the national flag of the Egyptians and we were desecrating it right in front of their faces. We were tying up their god to our, door, to our bedposts. And if anyone would ask us, what are you doing with the lambs? We would say, well, in four days we're going to kill it and eat it. And so when you think about it, the Passover ritual, to a great extent, was an act of Messiris Nefesh, a self-sacrificing act by the Jewish people to prove themselves worthy of redemption from Egypt. We were very dramatically taking the God of the Egyptians and desecrating it in front of them and then slaughtering it and eating it. 
It was a rejection of idolatry. The Passover sacrifice at its core was not simply a commemoration of the exodus from Egypt. The sacrifice of the Passover lamb was a rejection of idolatry. The great irony is that Christianity ended up deifying Jesus. Although initially Christians did not worship Jesus as God, he did not claim to be God, within about a hundred years, virtually all Christian sects came to believe that Jesus was God in the flesh, one third of the Holy Trinity, God the Son, and in virtually all Christian denominations throughout history, Jesus is worshipped as God. So to equate Jesus with the Passover lamb is incredibly ironic because the Passover lamb, if we really understand its message, would be saying, run as far away from this religion as you can. This religion that took a human being and deified him and worships him as God is the antithesis of the Passover lamb. It's not a fulfillment of the Passover sacrifice.